This is panel two uh, of the Vasaman 9 panel. It plots heart rate and oxygen pulse against time. I'm not going to dive too far in terms of what heart rate is, given the audience, you should be familiar with that. But oxygen pulse probably does require a little bit of explanation. As you can see from the units on the, on the graph, oxygen pulse is just the amount of oxygen delivered per beat of heart rate. Now, if we look at the Fick equation for calculating VO2, what we can do is we can rearrange that to show that the VO2 per heart rate, the oxygen pulse, is just, a, is just equal to the product of the stroke volume and the AVO2 difference. Okay. If we understand both of those two responses in a, a normal subject, you're going to see an initial increase in stroke volume before it plateaus, and the AVO2 difference will, will increase linearly throughout the exercise test. If we combine those two responses, you see that initial increase as both of them are going up, and then as the stroke volume flattens off, we begin to see a tailing off in the, the response that's just now as a result of the AVO2 difference widening. The important thing about a normal response is that it continues to increase throughout the exercise test. Even though it's becoming asymptotic, it's never actually levelling off. So let's look at some not so normal responses. So in this particular example, we're looking at a similar-ish heart rate response, maybe a slightly higher resting heart rate and maybe slightly older because we're not getting to the same peak in heart rate. But when we look at the actual oxygen pulse, what we can see is the response is a normal shape. It's increasing throughout the exercise test and not leveling off. But the magnitude of it is a lot less than the previous example, which has now been faded out. The reason for this is just, uh, for some reason, poor cardiovascular efficiency. Basically, we're delivering less oxygen per beat of heart throughout the test and reaching a, a smaller peak value. Now, that could be down to deconditioning. It could be down to pathology. Um, but it's indicative of poor cardiovascular efficiency compared to the previous example. Then there's this example where we can see a similar kind of resting heart rate, but not really getting up much past 120 beats a minute. Now, this blunted response has then resulted in a, a concomitant change in the oxygen pulse. It looks like quite a good one. We're getting that again, that increase all the way to peak, and they're fairly good numbers. But you need to be aware here that because of the blunted uh, heart rate response, what you're seeing is the body responding by delivering oxygen in a different way, and that's to widen the AVO2 gradient. If we're not delivering enough oxygen because the heart rate or the, the, the heart is not responding appropriately, then the muscular PO2 will drop a bit faster and force that widening gradient. The thing you've got to be aware here is that although it looks like a fairly good response, it's actually masking what's actually going on here. It's making it look better than it really is. This is likely due to one or two different scenarios. One of them is beta blockade, where we've medicated to blunt the heart rate response. And the other one is that there's an electrophysiological reason, uh, again, pathological, uh, that is reducing the heart's ability to respond in terms of rate. And therefore, the body is having to compensate in a different way. So you have to be aware that just because the oxygen pulse looks quite good, it might actually be uh, an overestimate of, of how good the, the patient's actually performing. Finally, this is an example we see occasionally in clinical practice. What you can see is the heart rate response is starting at something sensible around about 80, but then midway through the exercise test, we're seeing an acceleration in the heart rate. And that has resulted in poorer cardiovascular efficiency. We're delivering uh, maybe the same amount of oxygen as the test is going along, but we're doing it with more beats uh, of the heart, and therefore you're getting a poorer cardiovascular efficiency. In fact, here, we're getting a leveling off in the oxygen pulse. Now, because the oxygen pulse is proportional, or is, is the product of the, the, uh, the stroke volume and the AVO2 difference, what we can tell is that if, uh, if one of these two is still increasing or, or leveled off, then the combination of those two should still be increasing. So we've said about normal response, it should increase throughout. So in fact, when we see a flattening in, uh, in the oxygen pulse, it's an indication that the, perhaps the stroke volume is falling, or perhaps the AVO2 differences is falling. Now this can be for a variety of different reasons. It could be something like myocardial ischemia. It could be for a, a valve ear problem. It could even be a hypoplastic heart uh, in aging. These last three are all changes in, uh, in pump function. 
um, but you can also get a right to left shunt which will also reduce the AVO2 difference and result in a flattening if not falling oxygen pulse. So that should have given us a fairly good background uh, on panel two. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in one of the other videos where we'll cover yet another panel.